What's up guys, Rejinx here. It's October and what would you rather do? Go outside and watch some leaves fall off some trees? Or stay in the warm house and check out the latest new adventures in VR MMORPGs? If you said the second thing, then I got the news you need. This month, Alethea stretches their goals, Orbis gives us an island adventure, a dev speedruns a Township Tales tower, Draconic Order remembers what we've done, and more. Plus, as always, the lovely Lacey cooks up some bite-sized news. This is your VR MMORPG news for October 2020. Last month, I commented that the PC VR game A Township Tale was adding a climbing challenge tower, but I didn't realize how massive the tower was and how much of a challenge it would be. It was even a challenge just getting to the tower. After traversing a large new map area and even building a new bridge, you finally reach the bottom of the massive tower. I haven't even got up to the first floor yet, but they already have a lot of players actually speedrunning it. This is actually a video from one of the developers doing the speedrun of the tower without doing any wall clipping. The team also put out a couple more patches this month with fixes and balance changes. The highlight would be the big change to slingshots. A Township Tale is a whole lot of fun and completely free to try, and you can download the launcher from their Discord. On October 1st, Pandy posted the latest update to his medieval dark fantasy VR MMORPG Draconic Order. I think the biggest thing he added was the ability to create accounts to save your progress. He also added building and archery. Pandy and a couple of guys jumped in to show me around and after a few login issues we got in the game and the one thing I think surprised me the most about the game is how much game there is already. We ran a few quests, we played for a couple hours and we definitely didn't even see a quarter of the map. So there's plenty to do here. Now the game's definitely not in an easy state. You're gonna run into bugs left and right, but it's free to try and it's definitely a real VR MMORPG. The casting seems to work pretty well too. Pandy, the developer, plans to start setting up groups to test together. That way we can all jump in and quest and break things for him to fix. It is PC VR only and can be downloaded for free and played right now from the project's Discord. Bored of life as a human? Then why not try life as an elf or a dwarf? In this designer theme part, you can choose which character you want to be and more. Excuse me, what kind of ears would you like? Oh, pointed, I think. In last month's news video, I said it would take until December to unlock Orbis's new island update. But over the last month, the developers decided to take matters into their own hands and match all the community points turned in times 10, allowing us to get the latest update on September 29th. They also announced the community voted name for the island is the Forsaken Isle. The Forsaken Isle update adds a large new in-game area covered in creatures known as aberrations, which are basically elite mobs that travel in packs. They drop a few new fun goodies as well as a new piece of gear called bracers. The update also added some long-term missions for players to grind at. Congrats to Orvis player Elk, who I think is the first person to finish the long-term mission for fishing. That's a lot of sharks. If you want a full rundown of everything that came with the Forsaken Isle update and my thoughts on it, click here and check out my last video. And now the only thing left to come out for Orvis this year will be the seasonal event and the Citadel raid, which should release this winter. Over $159,000. That is the total that was pledged to the Kickstarter for the Fantasy VR MMORPG Project Elysia. The Kickstarter ended on October 5th and more than doubled its original goal. They reached many of their stretch goals, but to be honest, I bet many of them were already planned to be in the game. I guess it'll be nice to get a kitty, a pony, and a dragon, but what is this, friendship is magic? The next part for Elysia will be the slow part, I think. Now they need to build out their team and build out their game. They are hoping to start alpha testing in January. They could do with some help. I'll help. I was a brilliant swordsman. Where are all the others? Hang on there, we're right behind you. Polished him off. If I had to bet on what project I thought would go into early access next, I would put my money on Unbounded BR. On September 24th, Brian Carrillo dropped another gameplay video. In this one, he showed off questing, crafting, and just basic RPG town stuff. The crafting system looks basically to be give items to blacksmith, receive item you want crafted, which I think is fine for a game that looks to be much more focused on combat, leveling, and looting. 
Later in the video, you see the player hunting down their quest objective, which looks to be a baby in a diaper carrying a knife. We see a little more combat as well as a nice view of the world. I bugged Brian about when he thinks he might be getting us into the game. He said most likely November or December. On September 30th, Siwo, the developer of Never Dawn BR, gave us a quick look at his progress on archery. It is definitely a work in progress, but I'm always impressed with how nice he makes all of his assets look. The bow, the targets, and even the arrows look great. You can check out the whole video here. It was only about a month ago that NYX, the 80s inspired dark cyberpunk BR MMO RPG was announced, and they have already built a thriving community on their Discord. Over the month, Xcubic has been posting these short videos of game assets, and they said they were putting together both a single player scene demo for the press, as well as a multiplayer stress test for their patron supporters. The test is already scheduled for October 14th. Their small team is moving fast for a game not to be released for another two years. I know I'll be following their progress closely. Hey guys, it's Lacey with your News Bites for October. Zenith showed off a little of their second announced class, the Essence Mage. Elysium VR said in their last Q&A that the next alpha test should happen sometime this week. HP announced a new version of the Reverb G2 that they are calling the Reverb G2 Omnicept Edition. It will be the first consumer VR headset to have eye tracking, face tracking, and heart rate tracking. HP did not give a price or release date for their new headset. With the release of the Quest 2, Facebook announced that Rift S will be discontinued as Facebook goes all in on standalone VR. Virtuex announced a new consumer VR treadmill. The Virtuex Omni One is supposed to ship next year for around $2,000. And remember, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Put them in a bag of egg carrying. It holds twice the eggs. Thanks, Lacey. Thanks to you guys for watching my video. If you've watched this far, you should probably subscribe because I put one of these out every month, and that way you can keep up with all the VR MMORPG news. Also, let me know if there's any news that I miss or if there's any projects out there that I haven't talked about yet. And finally, until my next video, I hope to see you in the metaverse.